Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to see you back. If you're new here, welcome. Nice to meet you. My name is Dori. I'm a Canadian pilot. I you own a Piper Warrior since a year now? And one of the most requested questions is uh, the money. So today we are a little bit of a different background. We are not in the airplane. I shot this video first uh, in the airplane, but I was not happy with the result, so I have to reshoot it. But COVID-19, uh, you try to not go outside if you don't need to. I'm not going flying today, so I stayed home. Uh, that's why we are in pyjama, sweatpants, but it's not COVID-19 if you are not in sweatpants, right? The other day I asked you on Instagram um, if you had any question about ownership and that's what we are going to cover today. First of all, the numbers, it's Canadian uh, dollars. I'm going to do my max to have US dollars on the side so it's uh, easier for everybody to get the price. There is no magic science about money in airplanes, so there is no fixed cost, there is no anything that's gonna go as planned. So just keep that in mind, if you're planning on, a, on buying an airplane, go for it. Just go for it if you if you feel that you can afford it. But don't think that you're gonna buy an airplane at a certain price and that the annual is that price by year and the hangar is that price and that's all. You always gonna have uh, surprises, unscheduled maintenance. Before this video, I didn't really keep track. I knew, I knew roughly how much uh, the plane cost me, but I didn't really keep track. And thanks to you guys, um, now I know exactly how much she's costing me. So, without any further ado, let's jump into it. And thanks for strong as a mother copy for the fuel for the pilot. Should I add vodka in there before doing this? So, one of the questions was how much did I buy the airplane? Uh, I bought the airplane $50,000, Canadian $36,000 US dollars, that's out of the way. Then it's a lot of questions about the cost, uh, the dry cost by year, by month, um, so how much fixed without the fuel um, consumption uh, that the airplane cost. So, I did a little Excel file uh, with the price. Uh, I can Give you the link for that if you want this is not uh, the most accurate thing it's something I did myself so what I did here is I put the insurance the hangar uh, maintenance and you have the total cost uh, by year that's planned of course like you can have unscheduled maintenance the annual could be less could be more um, that depends on the airplane but basically roughly uh, if you have uh, insurance like my 1800 it's a little bit cheaper in the state but that's what I'm paying here uh, plus a hangar. I don't have one, but I put one here because most other people keep the airplane in the hangar. And the maintenance, I put like 3000 a year for annual. Of course, this can vary a lot. So, dry would be like $10,800 Canadian. And then uh, you have to add the fuel and oil and all on schedule maintenance. So, how you do that, it's pretty easy. Depending on the airplane, you just calculate how much it costs you uh, by hour on fuel. So mine is 76 Canadian dollars. Oil is roughly 2.75. So the total just um, on liquids, I would say, on the airplane cost me like $80. Then depending on how much uh, you fly by year, you're going to have to divide. You're going to have to divide the fixed cost by the number of hours that you have and add um, the fuel and the oil by that and you will have uh, the cost um, by year depending on how many hours you plan on flying. So here for example if I have those cost and I fly only 25 hours um, a year like the cost by hour would be 510 so you can see that if you fly 25 hours a year it's not really a good idea to buy an airplane because the hour is going to be way more expensive than renting one. The magic spot is 100 hours. When you hit 100 hours usually the cost equals the renting or gets a little bit lower and you can see here uh, for the numbers I have it's 186 dollars an hour that's probably what cost uh, the rental of the same airplane at the school and then more you fly less it's expensive by the hour but of course more you have fuel in there so make sure that you know how much hours you want to fly and a lot of people do that mistake they're like yeah I'm gonna fly every day I'm gonna fly more than 100 hours and at the end they fly like 30 hours so make sure that you will actually fly the numbers of hours that you're planning. Then I had a lot of questions about so if it's better to rent or to buy I just covered the question with the cost uh, depends how many hours you rent have the freedom to be able to move I do own an airplane because I wanted to leave the adventure and fly around the place something that you're gonna do by renting or you're gonna pay a ridiculous amount of money because of course if you fly for example two hours and you stay like two or three days there 
and you come back two hours, that's four hours of flying, but you can have to uh, pay a certain, a certain amount of money on the plane because it's it's not bringing money to uh, the owner. So that's uh, extremely expensive. Me, that flies a lot and like to go in so many places, it's better for me to own the airplane. Uh, partnership. I had a lot of questions on the partnership, so I own the airplane 100%. I, look in, I looked into partnership, but it's in my opinion not the best unless you're 200% sure about the person you're buying the plane with for the simple reason that um, if you want to do an upgrade and the other one doesn't want to, well, you can have a trouble and it's, 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 it's like having a wife, like you have to be sure because you sign a contract with that, the other person doesn't take care of the plane like you want to or any, any other issues that you could uh, have, you have to think about that. You have also the option of uh, block hours, once again, it's like renting an airplane, you can have way more hours on it. It's a little bit easier, but the same if you want to go like for two or three weeks somewhere, it's getting a little bit complicated. It's the same like sharing an airplane with somebody um, that might be okay taking care of the plane, or maybe not. You never know. So if I had any uh, surprises about the ownership, no, I was uh, well prepared. I had a bunch of friends helping me and telling me to not do this. <laughs> and uh, because of the money, because of the cost, because of everything that could happen with the airplane so I knew exactly what I was signing in, uh, signing for and still have no regrets on unscheduled uh, maintenance she got overhauled two magnitudes and almost overhauled uh, two cylinders it's almost, it's like a deep job in there but not fully overhauled so it's like roughly the same price so it's a little bit less than overhauled but it's still extremely pricey but I knew when buying the airplane I had to be ready for that kind of problems to make sure that you have the money for the annual but also have a little extra for anything that can happen on the side and believe me some shit is going to happen. The process of uh, owning an aircraft is pretty it's, it's it's a long process. First of all, you have to decide which airplane you wanna you wanna buy because of course everybody wants a super airplane, uh, but that's super expensive. But do you really need that? Yes or no? So for me, the best was 160 horsepower. I wanted a simple aircraft because it's way um, cheaper to operate. Like when you have retractable landing gears, constant prop, it gets pretty high in the price on the maintenance. So I didn't want any of that. I wanted IFR certified and I wanted a low wing. So what that being said, like the Warrior was the best, uh, the best match. I tried other airplanes, but the Warrior was uh, the best match. And then after when you know what you want, you have to look for the airplane, and that's again a lot of work because you're gonna find a bunch of airplanes, but you have to make sure they're in good shape. You're gonna see a bunch of airplanes, try them. If you feel them, if you like them, then you're gonna do uh, what we call a pre-purchase. Uh, or you can do an annual if you're really sure about the airplane, so that's out of the way, but it's big inspection. It's a bit pricey, but at least you know exactly the shape of the airplane. And yeah, you, you have to do that. You have to do that to make sure that the plane is in good shape because you don't want to have any surprises just by an airplane. That's not fun at all. The inspection goes well. You just have, well, to buy the airplane and do the paperwork and she's yours. It's it's pretty a fun process, a long process. It can be a little bit frustrating process, but you'll get there. Just don't buy an aircraft because you want one right now. Take your time and you will be happy with the airplane. And do you keep track of the cost uh, up to this video? No. I didn't want to know. Um, I didn't want to know. Like, I knew roughly how much, but I didn't want to have a precise number, because when you know the precise number, you just basically, you, you just stop flying. Let's be honest, you, you're gonna stop flying. <laughs> you don't want to know that kind of stuff. So, yeah, now I have, like, the file, I have everything, I know exactly how much it cost me by hour, and, well, that's a lot of money. I think that covers all the questions I had. Uh, if you have any more questions, just comment down below. If you like the video, just, you know, show some love, you can subscribe to my channel, that would make my day. And I hope to see you soon in the next one.